Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to look at another quick tip, uh, and that's going to be how to render an image sequence to a series of files. You might want to do this if you are going to render out some video of any sort and use that later in a non-real-time capacity. Potentially have something pretty heavy that you want to render into a series of images and then read that back in real time um, to get a little bit of performance boost. Maybe this is part of a technical assessment for an interview. Um, maybe it's just part of a proposal for a client. So in any case, I thought it was something good to talk through because it's actually really easy and it is... Also a good introduction to using stuff uh, with a lot of Python. So I'm going to do an abs time dot seconds times 0.05, animate my noise. I'll make it 1024 by 1024, the period of four, copy, paste it, wire this into the second input, and now I have something going on. Um, I'm going to also give myself a rectangle that I will make skinny. And then I'm just going to move the center. So I'm going to say abs time dot seconds less uh, divided by one without the Oh, actually, no, that's not what I want. I want a uh, modulo one, and that's just going to continuously loop between zero and one. And then I'll just subtract 0.5 from it. And then I will just be running this across the screen. And I'll make it a little bit slower, but not that slow. And now we have some nice motion just to be able to keep track of things. So. Uh, let's talk about rendering image sequences. So you could use a movie file out and save this as either a movie uh, or an image sequence. Rendering it as a movie is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, rendering it as an image sequence is also easy. You can just choose your default uh, image type. JPEG is going to be a little bit smaller. PNG is going to be better if you have transparency in your backgrounds. Set your FPS. So if I were to make a component out of this, I suppose I would create an in here. Call this text in. And then parameterize my FPS and parameterize my record. And then the other thing we're gonna wanna do is make sure we're pointing it towards some uh, folder. So for that, we can use something like a folder parameter. We can call it folder, we can pick folder. And then we can default it to just a dot. And a dot is going to mean the current directory that we're in. Then we can just add this here to our path, parent.par.folder.eval plus. And then we're just going to add a slash here to our name. And that is going to say, OK, this directory, then go inside of it and add this movie file out. You also notice this n uh, will change this increment. So that is for iterations. It's pretty helpful. Um, so you can then call different like takes or iterations, which we can look at in a second. So yeah, I guess let's just see what happens here. Um, if I open my parent parameters, we have our folder, 
Um, I'm already here, but if I say make a folder and I want my outputs to be there, I can just select this folder. Now it's at outputs. And when I record, you can see my recording is happening. If I stop and open up my folder, my outputs folder here has all of these frames and they're ordered. So we have frame zero, one, two, three, four, five. And as I'm just holding the arrow keys here, we can see our video actually playing at what would be 30 frames per second, except that this is just my image viewer. So it's not actually playing that fast. Uh, but we can see it's very easy then to just render a sequence of images. We record again. Uh, it is worth noting that we're going to be overwriting here unless we change our n. So if we change our n to 1 and start recording again, you can see our small index reset at 0. Uh, and then we're keeping n as our big index, which makes it, uh, where am I? I lost my files. Okay, get my outputs back. Okay, so we can see, especially if I go on details. So we have our two series. We have our series zero and series one, right? Zero and one. And series one restarted with a small index frame zero uh, when we incremented n. So the last thing you could do is potentially have this n increment every time you hit record. So you could do something like a parameter chop uh, just select record, have a count and a null, and then point this at n. And so now each time we hit record, our n is incrementing. And that way, every time we do this, it will be saving a new series of images. Um, the last thing that might be handy to do here is be able to define a time. Um, for example, we might say, okay, I want to record for 30 seconds. So let's do that real quick. So to do that, we can customize our component. We can add a record length, uh, float parameter. I'm going to default it to 30. And then in the label, I'm just going to put parentheses s so that we know that this is in seconds. We can then drop a timer, we can point its length at parent.par record length eval. Um, and then if we initialize and start our timer, you can see that that's working. Um, I'll make this shorter. And so you can see here that when I change this default, our length doesn't actually update here until I reinitialize our timer. So the other thing that we'll want to do is take this parameter chop, we can grab the record length. I will, I will select my record for my count. And then I will select, oops, then I will select my, um, record length. And then from here, we can do a chop execute. 
And when our record length value changes, we can say op timer one dot par dot initialize dot pulse. And now when we change our record, uh, record length, you can see that our length is changing here and our timer is automatically resetting. And so that's great. I think the last thing we probably want is when we click record to start our timer and then have our record stop when the timer is done. So we can do that through two methods. So first, we can actually just grab record also in this select. We can turn on, off to on. When record goes from off to on, we will do op timer one dot par dot start dot pulse, and that will start our timer. Um, but we only want this if we have, uh, if our channel dot name equals record. And we only want this if our channel name is record. So if I look at my parameters, make my record length five and hit record. Now my timer's starting. This is starting, uh, but it's not finishing when my timer is done. And so for that, we're going to want to use our timer callbacks, which are in this drop down here. On done, we can just say parent dot par dot record dot val equals zero. <clears throat> and now if we press record, our record is starting. You can see our n is incrementing like it's supposed to. When we're done, we stop recording, we reset this to zero, and we save our movie file. Um, and so now, this is pretty much done. Um, so, and now you're able to save a series of images, uh, any images with a specific FPS, a specific record length, and save it to any folder that you want. With that comes in handy and illuminates a little bit about how to think about managing content and files with Python and Touch Designer. That's it for today. Um, thank you to all of my Patreons. It is just great every time. Um, really can't say thank you enough. So thank you. I'll stop here, and I will talk to everyone later.